Today in Across the Fence, science with a side of fun and a slice of pizza. We're going to learn about a new 4-H offering to engage teens in science, technology, engineering, and math. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's a question we've all asked or had to answer. What do you want to be when you grow up? Whatever the answer, a mentor or a role model can help. For young people interested in science and math, there's plenty of information out there. The challenge is putting teens and scientists together. Well, University of Vermont Extension 4-H is doing just that. Teen Science Cafes are out-of-school events that are free, fun, and educational. Teens get to socialize with their peers and talk with local scientists and engineers. The setting may be relaxed, but the conversation about cutting-edge ideas and technology is lively. Across the Fences, Keith Silva was at the first Vermont 4-H Teen Science Cafe to tell us more. Look at those bubbles be a kind of organic life. If you were a teenager in the 50s or 60s, science fiction might have been the only way you learned about life on other planets. In extreme environments. And kind For today's teens, science fiction is fast becoming science fact. If we do find life somewhere else, we don't necessarily expect it to look like us. So this talk by ecologist Hilary Immick on Earth, astrobiology, the study of life on Earth and in space, planet. is the first Vermont Teen 4-H Science Pathways Cafe. UVM Extension 4-H Teen and Leadership Specialist Lauren Traster coordinated the event. This is a national effort. It started in New Mexico, and the folks there were so successful in what they were doing, they received a large grant to try to expand this idea across uh, the U U.S. So they have a goal of getting at least one teen science cafe in every state. So we are the first in Vermont. Okay. The formula for these cafes goes like this. Take teenagers interested in math and science, add a scientist from the community, provide everyone with free pizza, and voila, you've got a way of learning that's relaxed and fun. In school, it's very formal. Um, it can turn a lot of students off. In science, when done informally and casually and just through conversation and interesting ideas and sharing cool research, the hope is that you're going to spark interest in our young people to understand that science is more than just a lab coat. Liquid methane has a lot of the same properties as water. I really like science in general, so when I like heard about this, I thought this would be like a really great way to get more involved in science and meet. Isabel Chuchi is a junior at Essex High School. Getting to meet a real scientist is one of the reasons she came to the cafe. Most kids, like, the only connection they have to science is, like, through the teachers. And, I mean, obviously they know a lot about science, but it's not the same thing as being an actual scientist and doing, like, actual research and, like, work. And so I think it's just going to be interesting for um, kids to see how exactly that works and just, like, what they can do later on in the future. The casual setting of the cafe makes complex ideas, like life on other planets, a little easier to understand. Hearing that message from a scientist who also happens to live nearby makes a world of difference to Lena Ashu. Whereas when you can actually see what you can do within your state, like Vermont, you never think like of NASA in Vermont or of these big like science experiments happening in Vermont. But I think definitely through this cafe, we can see that there are professions within the state, within science that are really exciting and engaging. Ashu is one of the members of the 4-H teen leadership team helping to facilitate this event. Unlike her, most of the teens in attendance aren't 4-H members, which reminds Ashu of how much 4-H has to offer to anyone and everyone. Well, I think 4-H generally as an organization, a lot of people don't know that there are a lot of different parts of 4-H. I think the purpose of this um, Teen Science Cafe is to show people that there's a whole broad range of um, professions and expertise and different organizations that you can get involved in through 4-H. Is the gas usually visible? Well, you can see the bubbles that it forms. In addition to their talk, each speaker provides the attendees with a hands-on experiment. The teens were asked to take a soil sample and add water. If their sample produced bubbles, it was viable and could support life. This hands-on opportunity is in line with the 4-H model of learning by doing. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. 
getting to learn hands-on about a topic she isn't studying in school is what Ellie Ramirez Richer likes about this event. I think it's more engaging to like, and it, it's something different than school. It, it's a subject we haven't gone over so far, which is okay at school, but like I, I like to learn about other stuff other than just what we're learning at school, which is kind of nice. This gives you opportunity for that. Traster believes giving these young people a chance to meet and talk with someone who has a job they might like to do one day has benefits far beyond this event. A lot of times what happens is emails get exchanged and that young person now has someone that they can actually contact and say, hey, I came and heard you speak or you presented a workshop. I'm interested in this. Could you provide me some direction on are there articles I can read, websites I can visit, Facebook pages? Is there a school or a college that offers a, you know, a really good program in this? I think that is a tremendous benefit by connecting the professionals with our young people at the time that they're beginning to think about what path they want to take. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Discovering life on other planets is the next big leap for humankind. And who knows, maybe one of the teenagers at this Vermont Teen 4-H Science Pathways Cafe will help all of us take the first step. In Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, thank you, Keith. I'm joined in the studio now by Lauren Tracer. Lauren is the 4-H Teen and Leadership Coordinator. Welcome to Across the Fence again. Thank you. First of all, congratulations for getting so many teenagers <laughs> together in one place. Were you surprised at the turnout? I was actually blown away with how many people signed up and then actually showed up. It's a free event, so sometimes registration doesn't actually equal turnout. And we probably had uh, over 105 registrations with the majority turning out to the event. That's which was amazing. Now, what feedback did you get from the teenagers who attended? Yeah, so we did ask for feedback. Being our first cafe, we really wanted the attendees to to tell us, you know, what was the overall experience like? How did they like the speaker, the hands-on activity? Overall, everything was very positive. And what really surprised me was they actually wanted the cafe to be longer. Really? Uh, yep, they thought it was a little too short. And they wanted the content to go in a little deeper. They, they, a lot of them said that they uh, knew the topic and they would have liked more and some it was a brand new topic and they learned a lot. Even those that knew the topic coming in still said they learned and were really excited to have a discussion with the scientist who, who did this for a living or does this for a living. Um, but it was amazing feedback to, to hear from our participants um, what they would like to see in future cafes. Now how did you involve the teens in this cafe? So we have a teen leadership group that actually uh, plans everything for this so we started meeting in early October the very first thing that they did they they brainstormed different topics that interest them I am NOT a scientist <laughs> I don't have a science background so um, things that interest me are more environmentally related um, but what our teen leaders wanted was all kinds of science and so we put out their brainstorm sheet out to the universe of uh, UVM scientists and other colleges and different organizations to see if anybody would had a match to what they were interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we had some feedback come back in, the teens then selected uh, the topics that they wanted and they did all the planning. We even um, had a teen design the logo um, for the cafe. So they do, do it all. Probably a majority of why this is such a success because it was put together by teenagers for teenagers, do you think? I think that's a big part of it because it is being shaped by their peers to know what will interest them, but I think the concept of the cafe being a free program, being an informal program, having free food doesn't hurt, <laughs> um, but having something that really doesn't require a, a tremendous commitment. There's no dollar commitment and it's an hour and a half and now it's going to be two hours of your time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's an an easy access point for our young people to say, I'm willing to get involved because I don't have to give too much of myself. Right, it's not too big of a commitment. Exactly. Teens are busy. Yeah. So it's sometimes hard to do programs that last, you know, multiple sessions or have a dollar cost. Um, so a, a 
hour and a half on a Saturday night, being free, I think, really allows a lot more access uh, to that kind of programming. Now you've talked to us before about the leadership opportunities that 4-H provides. Is there a leadership angle being taught at these cafes? So not, we're not developing leadership skills at this cafe, but what we're really focusing on is this idea of a career pathway, a science pathway, and we're going to be introducing all different kinds of science, engineering, technology, um, jobs that exist here in Vermont being done by Vermonters. They're going to share the work that they do, um, demonstrate through hands-on activities the kind of work to open up um, our young people's eyes about what kinds of STEM careers exist right here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So it really is more of a career pathway um, and less on the leadership angle. And you mentioned hands-on. Why is that so important? Uh, any teen will tell you they don't want to just sit and listen. Um, so the way the teen cafes have been designed and are being done all over the country is that the talk is just the gateway to that hands-on activity. That's where you're going to get the spark. That's where you're going to get the engagement from the young person and getting them to really begin to see the kinds of um, work that goes into STEM careers. It's, it's much more exciting to do a hands-on activity, connect that to the discussion and the, you know, quote-unquote lecture piece of it. Um, but nobody wants to come and just have someone talk to them for an hour and a half. So it's really important to have that hands-on activity. Not only that, but there's a lot of conversation going back and forth, too. Yep, yep. So during the hands-on activity, it's a time for all the participants to be engaged with one another, to share hypotheses, to look at results, to discuss conclusions, and then have that conversation back with the scientists about what they're observing, what they're seeing, and then also discuss any um, questions that arise about, well, what happens if I did this or that, or what are next steps that I could take if I find this activity interesting, what else could I do? So it begins to just give that spark that hopefully will continue uh, the learning of the participants that, it, that attend these cafes. How important was it to have the cafe at the University of Vermont? That was a decision by the teen leadership team. Um, I personally love it, but again, it was not my decision. The teens really thought it was important to bring their peers onto a college campus and get them to have that experience um, in, in and have the experience on a college campus be there. And what was interesting, at our first cafe, I had a colleague walking in behind a group of participants who were commenting how excited they were to be on the college campus, that they thought it was so cool that they were at UVM for this. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it helps make that connection um, in that path of learning that, hey, here's a cafe, here's some ideas, chances are you might need to go to college um, mm -hmm. to have a STEM career and now you're on a college campus that offers all kinds of STEM majors for you to explore. Now we've been talking about the, the kids who participated. What about the scientists who participated? What was their feedback like? Were they surprised? They love. So we've only done one so far, mm -hmm. but the um, the scientists loved it. Thought it was amazing. One, the turnout, but also the conversation, the questions that they were asking were so informed and in engaging. And so for her as a scientist to be able to give back to Vermont students in the way she was able to, I, I think it was. Is, um, really enriching for her. Um, what's interesting is when we put out that we were looking for presenters at the Teen Science Cafes, um, two of the three presenters that are presenting this year actually approached us. This is something that they want to do. They understand the benefit of working with our young people to help them, to spark them, to get them interested, to help them begin their pathway into a STEM career. As STEM professionals, they know that having that kind of relationship with young people is really critical to get more young people into STEM careers. Well, a lot of the students study science in school and the internet of course is a great tool for that so what's different about events like the cafe so if you ask the students that came they like science they probably like their science teachers mm -hmm. But they want something beyond school. They want to connect with people who are doing amazing research, in, uh, different kinds of research, following different paths and um, 
have something that they're not being exposed to in their classroom. And it's not to say that Vermont science teachers aren't amazing, because they are. They're really at the forefront of getting our young people into STEM careers. But this is taking that to that next step by really right. connecting students to other professionals and other career pathways um, to get them thinking about what their next steps might be. So when's the next Science Cafe? So our next cafe is coming up soon. It's at uh, Saturday, March 31st first, also at UVM, and the topic is proteins. It's not just for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and so what do people have to do to sign up for it? Yep, so uh, we have an online registration on the UVM Extension website. Um, so people can go there and register. Um, you can see the um, website listed on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. And if there's any issues, people can also reach out and contact me at the number listed on the screen. Um, but we encourage people to come. It's open for grades 7 through 12. And again, it's free. We have free pizza. And um, it's a really fun, exciting program. Well, I want to thank you for coming on and talking about it today. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.